Good morning, guys. It is Friday, October 11th, 2024. This is Bathrobe Business. I got the coffee and I got the news. All right, let's jump into it. So uh, there's actually a number of interesting stories I'm going to share with you guys today. Uh, the first, let's talk about today, the PPI price came out, the producer price index, uh, with the more ge uh, generally more positive numbers than we saw with CPI yesterday. So let's jump into the article. Uh, it says wholesale prices were flat in September below expectations. Now, I don't think it's actually below expectations. It came in at expectations. Uh, so because excluding food and energy, the PPI rose 0.2% meeting expectations. So there wasn't anything bad with this report. It's just it wasn't a lowering. Uh, a measure of wholesale prices showed no change in September, pointing to continued easing in inflation. Yeah, sure. Uh, the producer price index, which measures uh, what producers get for their foods and services, was flat for the month and ended up 1.8 from a year ago. So uh, the PPI, the producer price index, is the amount that uh, manufacturers and producers pay for the raw goods. Uh, now, raw goods is sometimes hard to define, but it's kind of a, a liberal term. But essentially, if you're a manufacturer, this is how much your goods went up in cost. Uh, this doesn't determine the final cost of the product, because obviously this doesn't include things like labor, transportation, et cetera, uh, insurance costs, everything else that leads to a product increasing in inflation by the time it hits the consumer. But as just a, a raw manufacturing material, the prices didn't increase uh, drastically. They, they increased by 1.8% from a year ago. Um, now, last month, it was uh, last month in August, it was an increase of 0.2%, which was hotter than expected. But this month, it just came in at 0.1. So it, it's not that it came in uh, below expectations, it pretty much met expectations. A lot of these articles have very deceptive headlines that you actually have to read the article to parse through the data and realize that, oh, no, it's not what it was describing. And if you saw my video yesterday, you saw the same thing where they were saying, oh, P uh, so inflation is down, it actually was up. And you, when you read the article, you realized why. Uh, so this is some positive news for the economy. Uh, again, uh, as I, I underpinned a second ago, this doesn't include a lot of the things that lead to inflation in the market, like wages, cost of insurances, transportation, that come after the, the raw good reaches the factory. But it is still positive that inflation is still, uh, you know, only has one force, I should say, at the manufacturing side and not coming in before manufacturing. Uh, now, this article I'm going to share is actually really interesting because this is going to be parsing through yesterday's data. So yesterday's data, I shared with you guys the fact that uh, CPI was up, uh, what I would say is drastically because it's for the month and for the year, it looks like it's accelerating. Uh, this article does a really good job of parsing through the data. So uh, food prices increased 0.4% from last month compared with August up 2.3% uh, from last September. Uh, now, what's interesting here is it breaks it down by uh, actual items. So prices of meats, poultry, fish, and eggs increased by 0.8% and are up 3.9% from last year. So that's pretty big because obviously when we say prices of food has gone up, there's a lot that plugs into that measure. There's cereals, there's snacks, there's all sorts of stuff that you may or may not be buying. But meat, poultry, fish, eggs, those are staples, right? Those are the core of nutrition that you are buying for your families. And your uh, eyes haven't been lying to you. Uh, the numbers are up. We're up 4% from last year. That's not a small amount. Uh, and it's actually even a little bit worse than that because, for example, eggs saw a price hike of 8.4% from August to September and are up 39.6% from last year. So a 40% increase. Now, that one of these factors is there was an avian flu this year. So there was a culling, there was uh, quarantines, there was issues with manufacturing. But even so, you're talking about a 40% increase from last year. That's insane. Uh, in addition, uh, beef and veal saw prices go up 4.2% from last year. Uh, and Pri uh, prices of fruits and vegetables also went up 0.9%. Uh, juices went up 15.3%. Uh, dairy products only went up 0.5% from last year, uh, but milk is up. I think that's just a broader category of dairy products, including yogurts, cheeses, and everything. But milk is up 0.8% in September compared with a year ago, despite a monthly decline of 0.3. One of the few saving graces of what kept prices low uh, in the calculation of grocery prices was cereal. Uh, cereal and bakery products were a little changed. Uh, coffee prices declined. Um, apple prices were down 11%. Uh, and I, the price of potatoes was down 3.5%. 
Uh, also ham. So I guess that is one of the, the meats, uh, one of the proteins that was actually down is only down 2.5%. So uh, per efficiency food as well, 1.3. So those are the few saving graces. Other than that, a lot of your core pro uh, products that you're buying at the grocery store are actually up drastically. Uh, I really like this article because it really parsed through that data and gave you the details on it. Uh, next story, uh, let's talk about Tesla. So uh, let's jump into this article. So yesterday, Elon Musk hyped the uh, the robo taxi and the robo van. Uh, so there's two articles here. So here is what the robo taxi looks like. And let's see, that is your robo van. Uh, and so this was the big press event that is essentially supposed to be the saving grace of Tesla right now because they've got little going for them. Uh, so this big event was supposed to come out and, uh, you know, chart a new course for Tesla talking about how uh, it's going to be, you know, the future and this is how we're going to save the company. And so far it's fallen flat. Now, um, I will preface this with the fact that oftentimes when companies launch new products, there is usually in the market kind of a pullback where people say, oh, you know, that's not that big a deal. It's not that impressive. and We don't really care. But then the sales orders actually start coming in and things change. However, this is a little bit different. Uh, so I should preface this and say is that Tesla shares are dropped about 6% in the pre-market because nobody was impressed with the robo-taxi. Uh, the reason I would say is this is different. When I, when I give you that narrative that sometimes there's a pullback in the market when a new product is hit, that usually comes in the fact that the market uh, that the product is coming to market imminently, you know, within the next couple of weeks, couple of months. So, for example, um, back in the heyday of uh, Steve Jobs, there were these big announcements for new products all the time, right? The iPhone, the, uh, the iPad, the new Mac computers. And there was a pullback in the market, but then the, the product goes to sale the next quarter and sales rise. Everybody loves it. And the market trends change. Opinions change. However, with Elon Musk, this is kind of one of his biggest downfalls. He's an amazing hype man. But he's not that great with delivery. Uh, the Cybertruck was delayed, I believe, more than five years. I think it might have been close to seven. No, I, I, five years at least, because I think he announced it in 2019, and it didn't actually start deliveries until this year, 2024. In that time, uh, Ford launched uh, an EV truck and took it to market and started selling. A uh, Rivian was founded uh, and is selling very well in this truck department. And uh, Hyundai advanced their electric cars and flooded the market, uh, taking massive market share away from Tesla. And that's also not including the fact that uh, the Mach-E also did the same. So uh, Musk loves to hype things up and talk about how this is an amazing product, but he never delivers according to timeline. What's worse is, even with this product, uh, the robo-taxi isn't set to hit the market until 2026. And if he overshoots that, which he always does, we're talking about 2030 at the earliest. Now, the other thing that I, I have trouble believing is uh, he's obviously promising full self-driving uh, technology in these robo-taxis. And he's saying that all Teslas will have that in the next two years. However, the problem is he's been promising that since about 2016, 2017. This isn't a new narrative. Uh, every year, Tesla talks about how they're this close you know, to uh, self-driving cars, but they've yet to come any closer than anybody else. Uh, and it makes sense. You know, there's only so so far the, the lowest hanging fruit is usually what you claim in new technology and the rest of the gains are incremental. So it's very unlikely that within the next two years, we're going to have full self-driving cars just simply because we haven't had that yet. We haven't had any real advances in the technology outside of those early gains of essentially just lane assisting on steroids and, uh, you know, cruise control on steroids. Uh, and so I don't un understand how he's going to be able to muster this and, uh, it, because if that technology isn't there, if full self-driving isn't there, how are we going to have robo-taxis? Uh, the other thing I have a problem with in this announcement is, uh, so, okay, he's saying that uh, the robo-taxi is going to cost around 30000 Well, that's less expensive than most Teslas. So is he essentially going into competition against himself, phasing out? the Model S, the Model X, uh, the Model E, all, all of them, in place of a car that would do more than those do. If you're essentially getting into a car and it can just take you place to place, why do you need to buy a Tesla if this thing is less expensive anyway? Uh, you're essentially commoditizing it. And are you launching this for consumers or are you launching this for companies like Uber? Or are you launching this to have a company that competes with Uber? 
uh, there doesn't seem to be much market strategy or much business strategy that goes into this. I, I really don't understand the direction it's taking. To me, this seems like a lot of what Elon Musk does. It's a hype. He develops uh, a new groundbreaking idea and takes it to market knowing that it will boost the stock price without any real concept of how it's going to play within the market or how there's going to be an actual business built on top of this. Uh, so there's lots of questions to this that don't really make any sense. Uh, honestly, in order to boost sales uh, at Tesla, he could just do a bunch of different uh, simple things. Uh, coming out with new models, uh, and I don't mean uh, a new model S, I don't mean a new model, I don't mean a new models that compete with the existing models. I'm just saying a facelift or a revamp or a restructure. Take the model S and give it a new design, give it new features. Uh, take the Model X and give it new features. So just giving them redesigns is how traditionally uh, car owner car companies attract people back to their companies. They release new new versions of the existing models. And Tesla doesn't really do much of that. The cars remain relatively unchanged outside of minor uh, facelifts for decades on end. Uh, and I really don't understand why. Uh, so I think if he really wants to boost sales in Tesla, he doesn't really need to go for the technology aspect. It feels like that's what he's built his hype engine on. But you could just go with new, sleeker, sexier models. Uh, so there's that. Uh, that's uh, Tesla for you. Uh, next story I'm going to talk about. Uh, next two stories I'm going to talk about in passing. Uh, the first is this article I'm going to share is that the uh, there is a gender pay gap on top, but it's mostly... Uh, against men, apparently now. Uh, so uh, there is a gender pay gap at the top, but it's flipped. Women CEOs are out earning male peers. Uh, so the average male uh, CEO is making about 15.6 million. The average female six, uh, CEO is making about 16.5 million. This is a story from Axios. Um, it's a, a really a minor story. There's not much else going on, uh, but just that. So I thought I'd share that because I think that's kind of interesting. Okay, last story I'm going to talk about. So uh, this story becomes a little bit political and I try to stay away from politics as much as I can, but I can't with this one, uh, mainly because, uh, I think Mark Cuban is a piece of shit and, uh, I've never liked him. I have issues with him all the time, but this just goes to underpin how, uh, sneaky he is. So if you know anything about Mark Cuban, you probably know him from Shark Tank, but if, for those that really know, know that Mark Cuban is out there pushing DEI and ESG and all these initiatives that are bettering for society. Uh, and this is so underhanded. But at the same time, he wants to get rid of uh, Lena Khan, who is probably the best FTC chair we have had since the Gilded Age. Uh, she is out there actually trying to break up monopolies and break up major tech companies. And even the Republicans see value in it. J.D. Vance has talked about how he thinks Lena Khan is actually doing a great job and has hinted to the fact that she might stay on even in a Trump administration. Whereas Mark Cuban over here is saying that we should replace her because she's hurting, uh, you know, uh, consumers. Really, is she hurting consumers or is she hurting the billionaire class? Because that's what it seems like. And this is why ESG DI is all absolute bullshit is because the billionaires love to pitch it because it's a virtue signal. It diverts from the fact that they're actually stealing your money through massive corporate means. But they say that they support diversity, equity and inclusion. This is why all of the ESG stuff is an absolute grift, because it will virtue signal one thing, but in the background do another. It's another way for them to steal money out of your pocket and claim that they're actually bettering society. And this just underpins everything that Mark Cuban is. He's a, a slimy piece of shit. Uh, he wants to get rid of real change in the society that would actually increase diversity, that would increase equity. Uh, it would increase standards for everyone is having an FTC chair that goes in and breaks up major companies that steal money, rig the system, write the laws, but instead he wants to get rid of that and if virtue signal on Twitch uh, or Twitter, sorry. So yeah, fuck you, Mark Cuban. Fuck you very hard. Uh, I don't usually get that explicit, but I just really hate the guy. And uh, I think this just underpins what a piece of crap he really is. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so I'll see you guys uh, on Monday. I hope you have a productive Friday and I hope you guys have a great weekend.